the root of 49ers fans' loyalty to Jimmy Garoppolo, it's deep. I mean, I think most Niner fans want him to start week one and are pretty freaking apprehensive about this switch to Trey Lance. And it's kind of surprising. I thought the Niner fans would have jumped on the Trey Lance bandwagon by now, given that he was the number three pick in the draft and he's so gifted. But it's not going that way. What do you make of this phenomenon? Um, so to me, well, first of all, I feel like I have a more unique perspective on this than you because you only look at this from an analyst perspective. So you just don't understand. You look at one quarterback and he has all these gifts. You look at the other quarterback and he has specific limitations. You just don't understand it. I- I'm a fan. Yes. So I do understand why people are loyal towards Jimmy Garoppolo. First of all, Jimmy Garoppolo looks in every bit way what a quarterback is supposed to. He talks like a quarterback, looks like a quarterback. He, he has a beautiful throwing motion. But to me, He's got that and this is something we haven't discussed, but I finally understood, I think, why the loyalty is. He remains an enigma. Mm-hmm. The failure with Jimmy Garoppolo. You can't really say what he is no matter what. Because he's not been on the field to fail. Right. And he had the one year of success that they went to the Super Bowl. I feel like last year, if Jimmy Garoppolo had played 16 games, even if his ankle was healthy, there would have been a lot of struggling in those 16 games because I thought there were a lot of things that went wrong for the 49ers. And I felt bad that Nick Mullins and CJ Butler had to be the Duke quarterbacks to endure them. Jimmy yeah. Garoppolo, to me, the two most easily schemed football games for the 49ers of last season or probably three, I would say, were the Philadelphia Eagles game. Nick Mullins had a rough outing in that one. The Miami Dolphins, or excuse me, not the the, the Ram, first Rams game. And then the New England Patriots game. The first Rams game, the New England Patriots game, Kyle Shanahan just tore them up in terms of finding different ways to get the ball to the perimeter. And who was healthy for both of those games and transformed that offense? And we saw what he did for Nick Mullins, the one game he was healthy by almost single-handedly, win- basically single-handedly winning the second Rams game. That was Debo. Yeah, Debo was the one, and Debo makes it so easy for a quarterback and everything. And so, those two ga- those games, I thought Jimmy was able to benefit. I mean, you go look at go look at the A dot of, or just go back and watch. You don't even need to watch the film or anything. Just watch the throws that he made in the first Rams game. The yeah. first forward pass he made, he threw the ball three yards behind George Kittle on a simple stop route. Yeah, it was terrible. So. So, like, again, I, 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 I'm I, a fan, right? So I like Jimmy Garoppolo. I like the idea of Jimmy Garoppolo. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is a capable starting quarterback. At the same time, just because we haven't seen him fail over a long period of time because the 49ers have been successful and he hasn't been on the field doesn't mean that there are glaring flaws. I mean, you can go – and this is where I implore people to go back and look at the wins in 2019. If that roster isn't that good, the way he played, those look like bad losses on the quarterback. Start with week one. He was horrible in week one versus the yeah. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He was horrible. You yeah. go to week week three versus Pittsburgh. That was a rough game. Bronx you go to week four. Him out too at the end. Right. Week four versus the Browns. I mean, not really much in that game. The Carolina game that they blew out Carolina. He didn't play well. The monsoon, both the rain games. He was not good versus Washington. He was not good versus Baltimore. He had a rough game versus Atlanta. You go back and watch the first half of the second Seattle game. A game first Seattle game was rough. Second Seattle game was a game that, you know, he, for the most part, played well. He was accurate on third down, all of that. Watch the first half off of play action and just look specifically at his ball placement. There was a drive where I think he hit Sanders and Kittle both off play actions. Both guys went to the ground to catch the ball. Both guys were wide open where they're running still today if, they, if he hits them in stride. And he had one bad miss to, I think it was Kittle off of another play action there were see there's so much available that just he didn't hit and that's where I think it, that's what it is they just haven't seen him fail enough because he's not been on the field to experience that failure yet yeah what they're gonna say it like I can do it right now I was like okay Vish like you're picking out certain plays and you're getting really into detail but all I know all I know is that from 14 to 17 this franchise was dead in the water and even with Kyle Shanahan here they were one in ten and then Jimmy comes and they win. And Gee, say what but, you want, but Kyle hasn't proven that he can win without Jimmy. And until he does, we're hasty to get rid of him. And you know what? It's a very good argument. Fair, but here's what I'll say. The one thing people forget about 2017 is that was the greatest 0-9 team in the history of the NFL. By all statistical metrics, 
They were the greatest 0-9 team in the history of the NFL. And it was a fluke and they were 0-9. They lost like seven games in a row by like two points or something. And who were the two starting quarterbacks that year? Rookie C.J. Beathard and Brian Hoyer. So yes. if your argument is that Jimmy came and transformed everything, well, then you also have to take it in the context that that team could have won a lot of games with a lot of different quarterbacks that were not named C.J. Beathard and Brian Hoyer. That's a good point. That's a good point. Double B I, studio. That's, yeah. No, that's a good point. That that's yeah. that's always been my takeaway. If you go back and look at 2017, like I'm not here to criticize Jimmy. He won five games in a row. He had a couple game winning drives. He certainly made a lot of big time throws. All of those things. But 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 if you go back and look at what how the quarterbacks were playing before him, then you understand that you know the offense was working. The offense they were was always working. this close. They, yeah. they just needed like competent quarterback play, and that's what he gave them. He won a game 15 13. He did. Double B Studio says the goal is a Super Bowl. The Empire is hungry. We just want the best for the team come September. Love Jimmy, but it's about what's best for the team. Okay, well, then yeah. when you see these guys in person in preseason, that's when I think some of the apprehension will go away. Unless yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, to me, to me, I think that's what everybody wants, but nobody knows what's best for the right. team. But don't pencil in that what's best for the team is that Trey Lance shouldn't start at all because you don't know that. And don't pencil in that. What's best for the team is that Jimmy Garoppolo should it's play true. X amount of time because you don't know that. What's best true. for the team is what probably what the they're doing. The couch, yeah, that's right. that's what I want to say. I think, like to be fair, I think they're handling it right. I don't Perfectly. think they can get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo yet. I think no. they need to take this down to the deadline. They need to make Trey Lance prove it. They need to hold on to Jimmy Garoppolo just in case. I think they're doing everything right. We're just trying to sort I of project project what's going to happen. I think they're doing it brilliantly. It was yeah. we had this conversation two weeks ago when we talked about how Jimmy Garoppolo's play is going to be irrelevant on when Trey Lance starts. It's that exact thing. If if Trey Lance isn't ready, that's why you have Jimmy Garoppolo. You never yeah. committed to Trey Lance being your starter. You publicly, you committed publicly. to Jimmy Garoppolo publicly as the starter. You said it would be tough to beat him out. That's fine. You can move forward. You have a guy you know you can win with who's a capable yeah. starting quarterback. If yeah. Trey Lance is ready, then wow, Trey Lance wowed you. He just came in and just stole the job. Like there was nothing Jimmy could do because you went up and got Trey Lance. He's everything you wanted. And bang, it's a win-win for the 49ers. But I would just implore people to not say, oh, Trey Lance can't start because of X amount of throws in college. Well, those X amount of throws tell me that he needs more playing time. So yeah, sitting okay. is not going to give him that.